the appendicular skeleton images come in five different pages on the worksheets for this chapter. Before moving on, make sure that you have gone through each of the pages on your own and tried to identify each and every one of the features listed before proceeding with this video. For the pectoral girdle, we'll use the clavicle and the scapula. So the acromial end of the right clavicle would be this region, where the sternal end is this flat region. The acromion of the right scapula is this flat surface. We can actually see it from this anterior view, as well as from this lateral view. This is the acromion. The glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity is the actual socket, although it is shallow. The subscapular fossa of the right scapula is this entire deep surface of the scapula. The inferior angle of the right scapula is this lower pointy portion. The spine of the right scapula can be seen nicely right here. And then we have the medial and lateral borders of the right scapula, this being the medial border. This also is a medial border and this lateral border is on the same side as that glenoid fossa. The ilium and the ischium and the pubis are located here. So we have the ilium, we have the ischium, and the pubis. So there are three distinct bones that make up a single ossococcus. So you don't see the divisions between the bones but they are indeed three distinct bones and your terminology must reflect that. So if we talk about the ischial tuberosity of the right ischium, the ischial tuberosity is actually what we sit on. So it's this very rough structure at the most inferior point of the pelvic girdle. The acetabulum is the hip socket. The greater sciatic notch of the right ilium is this hook-like feature whereas the lesser sciatic notch of the right ischium, it's a different bone, and it's this smaller notch. The ischial spine of the ischial spine of the right ischium is here. The ischial ramus sticks out this portion. So you see the ischial ramus here as well. The iliac crest of the left ilium, so if we have the left side over here, this is the iliac crest. The iliac fossa of the right ilium is down here. We also have the iliac fossa right here. The anterior superior iliac spine of the right ilium, so if we go to the right, we have is this upper dot here. Oh, we can actually see it there. The anterior inferior iliac spine is right here. We can actually see it. Then we have the posterior superior iliac spine. The superior ramus of the right pubis and the inferior ramus of the left pubis. An obturator foramen is the big hole that is made up by the pubic bone and the ischium. On this upper limb diagram, we can see the spine of the left scapula, the acromion of the left scapula, the inferior angle of the left scapula, the lateral border of the left scapula, the head of the left humerus, the olecranon process of the left ulna, this is the upper portion, the medial epicondyle of the right humerus, this little ridge here. Oops, sorry, that's the left. So if we're doing the right humerus, it's this middle picture. The trochlea, the trochlea of the right humerus is the part that looks like a sideways little spool of thread. The olecranon fossa of the right humerus is on the posterior surface and it's this indentation. The deltoid tuberosity of the right humerus is a rough spot in the diaphysis of the humerus. The bicipital groove is actually right here. It's a dip between the two tubercles. One of them, the greater tubercle of the right humera, 
we have the capitulum of the right humerus. It's this rounded portion that the head of the radius is actually going to pivot upon. The lateral epicondyle of the right humerus, it's sloped and not as sharply prominent as the medial epicondyle is. The trochlear notch of the right ulna, this facet here that actually pivots on our trochlea of the humerus. The radial tuberosity of the right radius, it's this little bump on the radius. The head of the right radius looks like a golf tee. The styloid process of the right radius is this inferior point. The styloid process of the right ulna is less prominent, but it's still a little pointy feature if you look up close. And then the coronoid process of the right ulna is this lower portion of what pivots on the trochlea. The head of the left femur, obturator foramen are both of these holes right here. Then we have the ischial tuberosity of the left ischium, it's that feature there. The lateral epicondyle of the left femur is this bump there. The greater trochanter of the right femur. We can see that as that you can palpate it as well from on your own body. The lesser trochanter of the left femur is this feature right within here. Medial epicondyle of the left femur is this point. Gluteal tuberosity of the left femur. You'll see that on the posterior surface. So this will be the gluteal tuberosity is a rough portion along the diaphysis of the femur. The neck of the right femur, see here right below the head, or we can see it nicely on this posterior view as well. The neck of the femur is also what breaks when someone, quote, breaks their hip. The lateral condyle of the right femur, so here's our lateral condyle, is actually the lower smooth surface of the femur itself. The medial condyle is going to be on this inner portion. I'm just going to see it cupped down there. If we look very closely, we can see the intercondylar eminence of the left tibia, sort of this little bump that sticks up on the tibia, it actually rises up between the two condyles of the femur, and the head of the right fibula. You can see that here. 